hello let's try another capture the flag here we're gonna try sow okay so i do not have much details on sow however there is pretty much no walkthrough that's given on sow i've actually already gone and pawned it like a few minutes ago didn't take me that long exactly but nonetheless, nonetheless let's try the walkthrough so i'm just going to do this as if um it's like my first time trying to pawn sow even though it wasn't exactly that difficult for me to pawn sow but nonetheless, nonetheless let's try so of course the first steps in order to perform this capture the flag is to connect your vpn to your hector box vpn and remember to use the machines not not the starting point you have to use the normal machine so proposing you should know those steps by now you should be able to start the machine and get an ip address so this is all we have to work with first and we should be able to get um a flag the user flag and also the root flag so it's slightly challenging due to the fact that we have to find two flags for that okay so i'm going to propose um let me actually get rid of most of the stuff that i started off with Okay, I'm going to get rid of most of the exploits that I had written. We're going to start afresh for this one. Okay, so I'm going to first start off by trying to ping the host. Which seems fair. I mean, I do get responses from the user, so that is fine. Then I'm going to propose now that I perform an nmap scan. I'm going to do a service scan. And I'm just going to propose I paste that there as is. And do that. Okay, and this part will take excruciatingly long and map scans take quite a while to get any responses. I mean, most cases we would even fall asleep while it's still performing that scan. So, yeah. Um, in the meantime, while that is running, let me just show you the alternative to what I am doing now. I have mentioned it before, of course. Um, the alternative, as I, as, I, as I had mentioned last time, to using Nmap is to actually um, use a, a GUI version of Nmap. And to do this, um, you can use Zenmap for that. Zenmap is more user-friendly than Nmap if you just hate the terminal per se and you don't, you're not used to these um, switches, you can do that. But I also advise that um, you get yourself an Nmap cheat sheet. Get yourself an Nmap cheat sheet, propose quote unquote PDF. Get yourself an Nmap cheat sheet. Um, you, will, you will never regret using a cheat sheet, yeah? Get yourself a good old cheat sheet. Cheat your way around it today. Like, all you have to do is look at this. I think it sort of simplifies things per se. So yeah, use a cheat sheet and that might be beneficial. Okay, there is my dear friend Zenmap. So if I was to use Zenmap, it's a matter of pasting it there and then running the scan. This is an intense scan. It would it takes a whole lot longer than um this kind of scan that I'm doing here. So that is that. You can do a simple ping scan or you can do an intense plus UDP scan, intense plus searching on all TCP ports that's um an option that also takes way way longer a quick scan on the other hand doesn't take that long but nonetheless okay i think my scan is done okay these are the results that we have um okay so we've got port 22 running ssh okay so port 22 is running ssh and i've got quite the experience on ssh so let me propose i just try that out Try and connect to it using SSH. Yes, please. Uh, okay, I don't know the password. Let's let's just leave. Okay, so that's a failed attack there. Okay, then I should be playing around here. Okay, port 80 is running HTTP, but I can't open it because that's a filtered port. You'll notice that when I try to open that web service, it's a filtered port. Only only a certain a certain log of IP addresses that open that web page can go through it's filtered so we can't even interact with that port so now that's a mission failed for us okay we've got this one it's possible that this port can be a reflection to this port that might be some useful information too so let's try the very same thing let's stop that because 
honestly yeah let's try it on that port 55555 and beautiful we actually get a website now we have to like spend some time browsing through the website we have settings um i don't have an admin token oh no i don't have an admin token i can't use that um request baskets okay now this takes me to github nah that's that's nothing useful for me okay request baskets request baskets let's look for an exploit for this thing an exploit for request baskets there is one we've got a proof of concept here a poc so this has a vulnerability of cve 2023-27163 you want to read more information you can search this on the metasploit website but yeah that's the idea okay that's the cve if you need more details on that vulnerability but i'm a bad guy here i'm not, I'm not gonna read all these details about this vulnerability and everything that it holds and read all this i'm not gonna do that i'm, I'm here to just access the machine and capture the flag so nope all i need is this exploit so i'm gonna take this um shell code i'm gonna copy that let me go back home and then let me propose i will use nano let's call this exploit dot sh yeah we'll call that exploit dot sh i'm gonna paste all the code there and i'm gonna save this file okay we can clear everything out let's propose now we're gonna bash exploit dot sh okay so it says proof of concept of ssrf blah 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 in order to use this there's the usage we're supposed to call it by name give it a url and the target where it's supposed to connect back to so what they're saying this exploit does is it will create a vulnerable basket okay which will act as a proxy to connect to another user so what they're saying is if you request for that url it should be able to bounce off to another server that sounds useful i guess so i'm gonna run this exploit and then let me propose the url is pretty much what we already have which is this but not the whole thing actually this part we don't need the web part otherwise that's not a url that's a full um that's a full landing page we don't need that okay so i'm gonna paste that on there okay and the target let me propose that i want it to connect back to me so let's say localhost you should connect back to the localhost you should connect back to me in this case that's that's what i wanted to do right so i wanted to whenever we request for something it should set a basket you click on a basket it should request back to me and um it should request back to port 80 i mean it's a it's a web page isn't it okay which is pretty much that that filtered port that we had there that's that's pretty much what i need now okay so let's see what we have okay we actually do have a, a token now okay so we get something like this let's copy this and propose now we try and find out what we have there okay fail to forward to this unsupported protocol scheme unsupported protocol oh my bad i should have specified which protocol to use yes i i'm supposed to be using http there we go much better okay so what i did now was um, using this URL, it will actually create this basket. But when you click this basket, it's going to set and send a request to this link. Sounds fair, I guess. So I'm going to click on that. Um, do I get anything? I get a whole black page there. Uh, okay, I didn't copy that properly. Copy that link. All right. Uh, threats, events, severity, sources. So this is something called maltrace. I see. Powered by maltrace. Hide threats, reports, abuse, and false positives, and all that. Well, I don't know what maltrace is at this point. So let me propose. I just scan. I just do a simple go. Um, search on what is maltrace. Um, not maltreat. 
Oh, I searched for Mount Treat. My, uh, it's what? Mount Trail. Oh, yeah. Mount Trail. Mount Trail. What is Mount Trail in cybersecurity? Mount Trail is a malicious traffic detection system utilizing public available lists containing malicious and or general suspicious trails. Okay. But it seems like it has it. It has an exploit written for it already. So this should be this should be fun. Okay, so this is the source code for Maltrail. Looks something like that. It's able to look for malicious activity. Okay. Maltrail I want the version 0 0.53. I mean this is the version that is actually written in the in the footer there. So I want the version 0 0.53 exploit. This one. So this is what I need. This we actually get a file there. Let me copy that code just like I did with the previous one. Get back home. Okay, let me nano this and let me propose this is now an exploit.py. For those who are asking why I'm using pi, remember this is a pi there, so pi. Okay, let's run that and let's paste that there and save that exploit. Okay, let's run this using Python. So Python exploit.py. It says we need a listening IP port and a target URL. All right, let me read some more information on what this exploit does. Okay. This Python script exploits a command injection vulnerability in Maltrays. The vulnerability exists in the login page and can be exploited via the username parameter. Okay, so this has something to do with the login. Here's an example. For example, okay, so we actually do need a, a login page as the redirection. So yeah, we do need a login as the redirection. So let's propose we get the login. I think we do have a login for our our website here. I mean, we have web. Do we have login? We have a login page. Okay, it doesn't seem like we do have that. So let's try and revert it back to our login page. So we're going to use the very same exploit that we had before this one that we ran like this before but let's let it lead to login this time it should lead to a login page okay so we'll get a new a new basket yeah we get a new basket so let me use this basket okay we got a new ba okay login failed okay fair Okay, we got a new basket. Okay, let's run the Python exploit. So the Python says it needs a listening IP. So I'm I don't even have a listener yet. So let me use netcat and let me propose I listen on port one one four five. I don't know one one four five or something like that. Yeah, let me propose I listen on port one one four five. Okay, all I'm doing is starting a listener. It's almost like Metasploit where you just start a multi handler or something like that. A listener. To listen for a connection something like that and let me check for my ip address because at this point i can't use this ip address this is for my local wi-fi i actually need this um the ip address for the tunnel yes this one this is the ip address for the entire vpn network so this is what i need okay so let's go back to the exploit that we had before okay the listener is here that's fine Okay, yeah, this is what we have. Okay, so it needs the listening IP. Okay, here's my listening IP. Okay, and I'm listening on port one. That's port one. What port am I? What port? What port? What port am I? Okay, one one four five. Yeah, port one one four five. And the link now that i'm going to propose i use to that actually leads to the login page is this one so this is the url okay that's the target url okay so we've got the listening ip there the port 1145 and the url is that one that leads to the login page so let's propose now we run this okay uh where is this Oh, perfect. We got a connection now. Perfect. Now, Netcat has actually got a connection, so we're perfect now. Uh, who am I? I'm Puma. Okay, cool. Where am I, though? I'm in Maltry. Okay, take me home, though. I want to go home. I want to go to the home directory. 
Okay, now that I'm in the home directory, as you can see, I'm in home of Puma. Let's see what we have in here. We actually have a user.txt file. If we catch this file, user.txt, we'll find the first flag. And this is the user flag, which is for this part. And what we need now is the root flag. So to find, let me go back home. So now we actually need to, yeah, we need to perform some privilege escalation for this part now. So I'm going to propose that I list all the files like that. Okay, um, actually, I've used the wrong one. Let's go for ln. Okay, ls. La. Yeah. My objective is to actually look for all files that um, are owned by root, per se. Okay. So root can go to the previous directory and root was actually in the bash history before. Okay, so there is something that I can do as root. Okay, so let's propose sudo check l. What this is, is to check for commands that I can run. Remember, I'm Puma right now. I'm looking for a command that I can actually run as sudo. And I can see that user Puma can run the following commands as sow sow being the root user so i can actually run as sow only this command this is the only one that i can run as sow so my idea is to run as sow when i run something as sow then i become sow and then i'm essentially root so let me propose i run this as sow so sudo is basically who sow is and then i'm going to run that command all of it i'm going to copy all that like that okay the terminal is not fully functional but it is ready okay so the terminal is ready so let me propose i tell the terminal to give me the bin i don't know give me the bin bash okay i got the bin bash okay i did get the bin so what this means is i'm, I'm trying to access a terminal a terminal location so now root at sow so let me propose i ask it who am i now Okay, I'm root, so perfect. I've managed to escalate privileges safely. Okay, now take me to root. Okay, if you check PWD, I'm in root. Uh, do we have any files here? Yes, we do have root.txt. What's inside root.txt? We have the flag. And that, my friends, is how we get that root flag. And that gives us both flags. So yes, majority of the time we just literally running Google searches to find all the entities that we need. But that is how I went through the SAO problem and completed it in real time. All right, so try the walkthrough and I'll see you guys in the next CTF.